All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. Uh, and looking forward our, to our discussion on how the future of optometry is in innovation. Before we begin, I'd like to take a few minutes just to quickly review a few housekeeping items. Uh, on the right, you'll see some your go-to meeting controls, where you can ask questions, you can chat. Uh, we will be doing polls throughout today's webinar, uh, and we encourage you to participate as it really will help us guide that conversation and get an idea of your opinion. Uh, so please participate, and you can do that within your go-to meeting controls over here on the right. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please submit them within the questions uh, portion of your uh, go-to meeting controls. Uh, our team will be monitoring and we'll review them if we have time at the end. Otherwise, we can follow up as well. But please submit any questions. We'd love to get your thoughts and any questions you have throughout the web to, throughout today's discussion. So, with that with that said, I'd like to introduce today's speakers. Uh, I'd like to first, starting with my esteemed colleague, Steve DiMonti, I'd like to introduce um, him first. So Steve, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure, thank you, Patrick. Um, to everyone on the phone, my name is Steve Diamanti. I'm a PhD chemist, and I'm currently Senior Technical Marketing Manager at Cooper Vision. Uh, I've worked in research and development uh, for about the last 15 years, and my first role at Cooper Vision was managing the chemistry team at our research and development center. And my team actually uh, was instrumental in the development of the My Day contact lens, uh, which is Cure Vision's premium one day silicon eye gel lens that I'll be talking about a little later. So um, now my journey has, has brought me into the marketing team and um, talking more about how we bring innovation to practices such as yours. So I'm looking forward to talking to you later. And Patrick, back to you. All right, well, thank you. It's definitely a pleasure to have Steve on, join us on today's discussion uh, with a lot of key information uh, from the contact lens side. But then there's myself, my name's Patrick Tobin. I'm an account executive with iCare Prime, currently working on completing my MBA from the University of Maryland. I have a diverse background in business and IT, definitely a preference and an interest of mine as well. Uh, I actually come from a family of dentists, so I started off, my dad was in dentistry, had a small practice in the DC area, I started doing some digital marketing with, within his office, which was very competitive in the DC area. Uh, but naturally, I gravitated over to eye care, and it really is interesting to see the differences and really looking forward to going through in ways that we can support the eye care practice industry today. So, in terms of today's webinar, we are excited to go through some really thought provoking content we feel is relevant in eye care today. And we're going to cover topics on how consumer technology has changed patient expectations of convenience, how you can better align your patient's health needs with today's most advanced contact lens technology, and finally, define what digital disruption currently means in eye care and resources available to your practice for a competitive advantage. So to kick things off, I'd like to begin with a short poll and get your opinion on what do you think is the biggest threat to your practice? Is it online refraction, like alternative and simple contacts? Is it patient self-diagnosing? Patients searching on WebMD, which can actually be pretty scary if you've ever done it, and attempting to diagnose themselves before scheduling or in advance of an appointment. So online eyewear sales or new competitors. So I'm gonna open this up. Please take a few take a few seconds just to submit your vote. Let us get your thoughts. All right, we have a few few votes coming through so far. Excellent. We'll take a few more seconds just to give some people time if they haven't already voted. If you're just now joining, please uh, feel free to submit and um, interact within the poll. All right. So I'm going to close out the poll. If you haven't, last chance. Otherwise, here we go. And I'll share the results. 
very interesting. So majority said online eyewear sales. And to be honest, I have to agree that that was definitely a big threat. New competitors are also playing into that. Um, but really this question was more of, it's really important to have a deep understanding of these competing threats. So however you voted is really what you're perceiving as your biggest threat is what's driving your business and IT strategy. So let's think about this. So if it's online refractions, and what are ways that you can optimize with it for those that have voted within online refractions? You should consider using digital technology to ensure patients are able to schedule an exam online and ways you can retain them. Patient communication software and relationship management is a great way to do that. In terms of patient self-diagnosing, your strategy should explore optimizing your digital marketing efforts so you can become the eye care content provider your patients are looking for online, online versus WebMD or other resources. Optimizing your digital pre presence and digital marketing efforts is a great way to do that as well. The majority voted in terms of online eyewear sales, you know, how you can retain patients who purchase, you know, how can you retain patients who purchase less than an annual supply of contact lenses? We'll come back to this later in the discussion on a solution to combat these increasingly competitive categories, but are you tracking your annual supply capture rate? And it's important just to consider that not as you put a lot of effort into, for, uh, into positioning the annual supply, but not all every patient is going to buy that way. And how can you capture those patients that don't? We'll also come back to that later as well. And new competitors, new entrants is also a uh, key component of today's discussion as well. Um, but thank you again for everyone for voting. So I'm gonna hide this. As an eye care practitioner, a business owner, or a professional, you have an advantage from that face-to-face -face interaction, the in-office visit, speaking directly with the patient. But you also have this additional value-add component where you can position products that fit their eye health needs. Let's keep, in doing that, let's keep in mind that patients are also consumers. They're taking the time to prioritize their eye health, but understanding their buying preferences and habits can be very expensive and challenging for any business and any industry from a consumer perspective. So as their trusted eye doctor, I don't need to restate the obvious that you are their number one resource to care for their eye health. But is this, it is this for this reason alone that you should be look, they should be looking to you for the most quality, innovative solutions rather than searching online. I'll be the first one to admit that as concerned as I am about my eye health, it is difficult for me to compromise on my buying habits. Providing additional value to patients is helping build a healthy relationship, allowing for greater retention rates, loyalty, and profitability, but are you understanding their buying habits? And the data here within the slide is a key indication of that. So technology, technological advances in information, connectivity, and computing has significantly driven down the cost to enter markets. So new competitors are emerging as they recognize the consumer, consumer trend firms are too slow, unaware or unwilling to address because most often they're too comfortable with the conventional way of doing things. This is how digital disruption happens or at least how you invite it. So take retail, for example. Now, those who are thriving today, those who are thriving today recognize the need to incorporate digital capabilities into their model to compete with Amazon. Threats of digital disruption motivated them to change. And just yesterday, I stumbled on a headline reading, big box chains are starting to get a handle on this whole shopping in the digital age thing. Not only have they learned to compete in the digital age, but in doing so, they've redistributed disruption of their own. Motivating Amazon to explore opening brick and mortar locations, pushing the company outside its online only comfort zone. This is huge. There's a lot of talk about millennials, but and I know they're always a huge topic. On average, millennials own two to three devices, and innovation in mobile technology has increased device usage and usability. So love them or hate them, but millennials still grew up in a world with less reliance on digital devices or no digital devices at all. I, I remember the first desktop computer my parents bought for our home and the pains of going through dial-up broadband to in-home Wi-Fi networks we have everywhere or available to us everywhere today. So my point here is that 
younger generations are growing up in a world where mobile devices and digital technology are already, are already the norm. Regardless, all generations are increasingly more reliant on their digital devices today than in the past. And it has changed the way we communicate, exchange information, and purchase goods and services. So I'd like to take time for another poll. Um, I'm going to open this up here and ask you, you know, what, and just consider, take a few minutes to consider, I like, what, what do you, what do patients prefer most when making a buying decision? Is it quality product the patient is looking for? Is it the best or lowest price? We all lead busy, lead busy lives. Is it a product convenience or simple buying process patients are looking for? And finally, is it brand recognition that the patient prefers? So I'm gonna launch the poll here, take a few seconds. We'd love to hear your opinion and your thoughts. Awesome. Let's take a few more seconds. Looks like we've had a majority of people vote so far. If you haven't had a chance to vote yet, I encourage you to do so. But All right. Well, I'm going to close out the poll, save us some time. Thank you, everyone, for, vote, for those who have voted so far. I'm going to share the results with you. Very interesting. Um, so majority has said price. And most often, I, I would have to say that this would be, be in line with the majority of thinking. But this really was you know, a way of getting you to think of what do you perceive as their, big, as their preference? What are those driving factors for your patients? And are you tracking these things? And how are you keeping track of these things? But in terms of how you voted, going through just the results, the quality is an important, important force providing your patient a quality product that fits their needs is you know, really setting you up as that, that provider, that trusted provider they're looking for. You know, I, caught, you know, I caught a friend using Hubble contacts recently, and it's funny that he's always complaining about his eyes. When I asked why he chose Hubble, his response was somewhere along the lines of, the price was too high in the office, I couldn't afford to pay that much up front every year. But taking a deeper look, it wasn't necessarily the lowest price he was looking for. He simply preferred to split up his payments and resupply when he needed them without feeling obligated. He liked the convenience of the subscription service and the ability to buy throughout the year and lenses shipped to him. To give you another example outside of healthcare, I can use myself for example. You know, to me, it's not cool when I, have, when I have a mess to clean up and I realize I've run out of paper towels. Since I don't always have the time to make it to the grocery store, it's very easy for me to use Amazon Dash and press the dash button, two days later, paper towels arrive at my door. I'm willing to pay more for the convenience of easily reordering paper towels when I need them, rather than risk running out and not having time immediately to make it to the grocery store for a lower price. And finally, brand, this is also a key component. You know, since millennials actually identify with certain brands and the value proposition and the values behind that brand are key in attracting millennials. So that's also something to keep in mind as well. But all four of these forces play into your patient's buying decision, and it's important to keep these things in mind. So they'll vary amongst the different segments of your patients, and targeting these preferences is important for effective marketing. But consider this. Last year, in 2017, consumers spent $453 billion online, and e-commerce sales are project, projected to continue growing. Now, as consumers, we're, we are shopping at every moment from everywhere. E-commerce and subscription services have created new expectations of what we perceive as quick, simple, and, and convenient experiences that can be immediately gratifying and somewhat addicting. The speed at which businesses so what this means is the speed at which businesses move continues to get faster and faster. So it's necessary as a business owner to recognize and implement a strategy that prevents getting outpaced, which is a common factor for other companies victim to digital disruption. 
like Blockbuster and now Toys R Us. So creating a digital edge is vital for today's business model. And that's why you're seeing more companies expand their capabilities across multiple marketing channels to drive better customer experiences in store and from the customer's devices anywhere and anytime. This multi-channel approach is becoming a new norm and a majority of businesses have committed to offering some level of a multi-channel approach by, two, by end of year 2019. This is a great way for you to leverage both the in-practice experience with the digital availability to complement it. Like I mentioned earlier, retailers transform to better compete. And just think to yourself, do any specific companies come to mind that have digitally transformed? Some of you might see every day. Companies like Starbucks and Domino's might probably consider themselves more of a digital company today than just a pizza or, or coffee service. This transformation has been faster in some industries than others. And online competitors and new entrants are seeking ways to innovate and decrease those barriers to entry. In eye care, there's so many barriers that make it challenging or distract online competitors that most other industries listed here don't have. But this is a huge opportunity for you and your practice, an opportunity to fortify your business and prevent disruption by finding ways to innovate and optimize for greater efficiency. Don't get me wrong, innovation doesn't mean you have to reinvent the wheel. What, I'm, what I am suggesting is that you already have this infrastructure in place where online competitors are spending millions and millions to reach. And there are many affordable resources available to you and your practice with an innovative focus to optimize and complement the quality, the quality of service you work very, very hard to provide your patients. Just a few resources in today's webinar are, are partners like Cooper Vision and iCare Prime, who deeply value maintaining that doctor-patient relationship and aim to support your practice with innovative products, innovative products matched with a simple, highly effective digital solution to capture revenue and provide value throughout the entire patient journey. Helping you so you're able to recommend today's best performing products to satisfy your patient's eye health needs with the digital capabilities for them to buy from you, their trusted eye care doctor, anywhere, anytime. So integrating these components into your business strategy is a good step in redistributing online-only business models and potentially preventing disruption altogether. So with that said, I'd like to pass the mic over to my fellow colleague, Steve Diamante, to further talk through innovation, and ways and detailing the tools to interest your patients and how you can defend your practice in this growing digital age we live in. Steve, I'll pass it over to you. Great, thank you, Patrick. So Patrick's done a good job taking you through some of the unprecedented changes we've seen in the marketplace. Um, and what I'd like to do is to put forward the idea that innovation can be used as a tool um, to help keep your patients happy and defend your practice against this changing business environment. And particularly, I'm gonna talk about how fitting some of the latest technology in terms of contact lenses, being silicon eye gel one days, can help you achieve that goal. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start it off with a poll question um, because we're talking about innovation. So what better place to start than think about innovation and contact lenses? So we're gonna go ahead and open this poll and the question is, what is the single most important development in the contact lens industry in the last 30 years? Is it multifocals, silicone hydrogel material, disposable lenses, or scleral lenses? And I'm gonna give you a few seconds to vote. Um, uh, please do participate because it's always very interesting to see um, how people vote and what their thoughts are and um, how that matches up with uh, some of the research that's been done in the field. So I see about half of you have voted. Uh, so we're gonna give you a few more seconds before we close the poll down. So we're gonna close down the poll in five, four, three, two, last chance, one, all right, let's close the poll and we'll go ahead and share the results. And so what you can see is that 
um, over half of you thought that the most important development um, as far as innovation in the last 30 years had been disposable lenses. And another 30% of you uh, said siliconite gel material. And then there were 10% with uh, multifocals and scleral lenses. So this is a very clever audience uh, because in fact, what we've what we've seen is that in contact lens spectrum, they actually asked this question in September of 2016 to the 100 most influential contact lens fitters and researchers, and they asked them their opinion. And much like the audience, uh, their number one choice was development of disposable products, particularly one day disposable, and also silicone hydrogel materials. And I really liked what Professor Nathan Efron had to say about the impact that silicone hydrogel materials have had in the contact lens space. Uh, he said that um, to him, silicone hydrogel was such an impactful innovation because it enabled uh, ECPs to solve hypoxia. And he talked about how we used to spend so much time, so much chair time, um, trying to overcome some of these issues that hypoxia led to, and that, that now most of these problems have been relegated to the history books. And so this is a pretty bold statement. So some of you have been wonder, might be wondering, who is this Professor Nathan Efron to make such a bold statement? Uh, well, in fact, he's actually the person that developed the Efron grading scales, which I'm guessing you'll be very familiar with. So to me, it's a, it's a very strong testimonial to the value of silicone gel materials that the person that invented the grading scales to rate um, contact lens related complications has said that in fact the development of silicone gel materials ha has enabled us to eliminate or greatly minimize many of these complications that are related to hypoxia. So this is very cool. So that's all well and good, but of course, um, the latest technology is only helpful if consumers will actually buy it. And so for our next poll question, I'd like your thoughts on what percentage of contact lens wearers surveyed said they would actually pay more for, for a healthier contact lens wearing experience. Uh, so of course, uh, you know, contact lens companies can bring the latest technology and the healthiest products to the market, uh, but unless wearers are willing to pay for them, that will have a limited benefit. So I see we have a lot of voting, um, and so I'm glad everybody's participating. We're gonna give you a few more seconds to place your votes and close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and we'll go ahead and share those results. Uh, so most of you did believe that uh, contact lens wearers would pay more for healthier contact lenses. About 58% of you uh, said that about half of wearers would pay more. Um, and 33% of you said that about 75% would pay more. Uh, so we all agree that for the most part, the majority of contact lens wearers would be willing to pay more. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm actually going to share with you um, some insights that CooperVision collected from a survey of contact lens wearers. So CooperVision surveyed 1,100 contact lens wearers a few years ago to really try to understand what patients want. Uh, and, and one thing that we found out is that um, as an eye care provider, you are really in the driver's seat for your patient's experience. So we found that 94% of the wearers surveyed were influenced by what their doctor recommended for them to wear as far as contact lenses. Um, so we're talking about the future and how we help build it. And the great thing is that yourselves as ECPs have such an influential role in helping shape what the future of contact lenses will look like. And that's because your patients trust you, even with all the changes going on and all the new ways that they could buy contact lenses, your recommendation is still extremely influential to them. And we also found out that health was extremely important. Uh, so when we looked at all the different factors that patients uh, consider important to contact lens wear, health was one of the most important factors. In fact, it was only second to vision quality. 
Uh, and earlier on, uh, Patrick had put up a poll talking about what do you think is important to wearers in a product? And about 50% of you, or just over 50%, had said price. In fact, with contact lens wearers, we found in this survey that the lowest price for a product was actually ranked fifth, uh, far below health and other aspects of product quality, such as comfort uh, and, and things like that and UV protection. Um, so really what patients want is, is for you to prescribe the healthiest material available. Okay, so now we finally, I know the anticipation has been building. Uh, so we're gonna show our, our polling question answer. Uh, so in fact, no one chose the right answer. And I think it's because this answer was, was a little bit shocking even to us at the time. Uh, in fact, 95% of contact lens wearers surveyed were willing to pay more for a lens that was healthier for their eyes. And so really what your patients are, are, are looking for is for you to tell them about the latest technology that's available. Um, we've just done some really interesting uh, consumer research and what we found is that most patients expect that their ECPs would be prescribing or at least offering the healthiest contact lens material and the best quality product available to them. Uh, so certainly that's their expectation. And um, so you have a, a great opportunity to tell your patients about the latest products. And as we've seen from the survey, they will listen to you because you are influential. And the good news is, is that there's never been a better time um, to offer patients a silicone hydrogel one day lens. So as we sit today, we're taking advantage of almost 20 years of innovation in the silicone hydrogel space. Uh, so some of the first products were launched in 1999, and as you can see, since then we've had numerous launches in all types of different wearing modalities and um, new players coming into the mix. So while Cooper Vision uh, was a little bit late to the party in silicone hydrogel, uh, you could see since the launch of Biofinity in 2006 that we've actually become a leader in silicone hydrogel innovation. In fact, with launching more new silicone hydrogel materials than all our major competitors combined in the last 13 years. So it's a really exciting time for silicon hydrogels. And as a chemist, I will admit that, uh, you know, silicon hydrogel materials came from humble beginnings. Uh, so at the start of silicon hydrogel, we made some materials that weren't that great. Uh, so if you looked at 2000, in 2006 at where the soft contact lens space was, we were really in a time of trade-offs. So we had uh, high water content hydrogel lenses, uh, which were soft and comfortable, but they had this big issue of being low oxygen transmission. Uh, and this led to a lot of the issues of hypoxia that Professor Nathan Efron referred to. Of course, all contact lens manufacturers saw the need to develop higher oxygen materials. And that's why you saw um, in the late 90s, the development of these new silicone hydrogel materials bringing far greater oxygen transmission capability to the contact lenses. Um, but as, as part of that, some of the trade-offs were that you were getting lenses that were stiffer, sometimes less comfortable, um, and sometimes had challenging wettability. And so ECPs were in a space where they really wanted to prescribe the healthiest material, but sometimes didn't have an option that was comfortable or soft or wettable enough. And so when Biofinity debuted on the market, it really was a game changer um, because it, it offered an end to these compromises. So with the latest technology at that time, ECPs had the choice of a reusable lens material uh, that could not only be highly oxygen transmissive, uh, more than enough for even overnight wear, uh, but it also gave some of the beneficial aspects of hydrogel, such as being soft, being naturally wettable, being comfortable on the eye. Uh, so this has been described by many ECPs as, as a game changer in the field. And recently, history has repeated itself in the one-day space. Uh, so earlier on, uh, about five, six years ago, we had a similar situation where you had uh, soft, comfortable one-day hydrogel lenses, and you had some um, silicone hydrogel lenses that, that hadn't done as well in the market. Um, and so again, you had this issue of, having to trade off one property, 
such as softness or low modulus um, in order to benefit from another property such as higher oxygen transmission. And with Cooper Vision's one-day silicone hydrogel portfolio, we've really been able to end those compromises and create a new material paradigm, um, where with the My Day and Clarity one-day lenses, we have lenses that are nearly as soft as hydrogel materials, but retain the excellent handling properties and the high oxygen transmission characteristics of a silicone hydrogel. Um, so we're really able to bring the best of all worlds to our contact lens wearers. And so, um, you know, the great thing is the silicone hydrogel future is here today. Uh, there's really no reason to wait for something else in the future um, to start upgrading your patients to a silicone hydrogel one day because we have all the types of lenses. We have torque, multifocal, and sphere available. We have multiple brands uh, for patients to choose from and you as ECPs to prescribe. Uh, so there really has never been an easier time uh, to upgrade a patient into a silicone hydrogel one day lens. And so, you know, one could, could think that perhaps silicone hydrogel one days uh, could be the future of contact lenses. Certainly, if you look around the world at uh, different countries, that's where the market is going, and that's what ECPs are prescribing. And we'll go back to our friend, Professor Nathan Efron. Um, and he talked about, when he talked about his view of the ultimate contact lens, he said it would be silicone hydrogel uh, supporting ocular health and eliminating complications of hypoxia, coupled with daily disposable, which clearly supports convenience for the wearer and excellent compliance. Um, and he threw, threw in it, yeah, it'd be great if it was low modulus as well. Um, so we weren't trading off on any properties that we used to have from hydrogels. And so the great news is, is that we have these materials available today um, to upgrade your patients into. And so it's a really exciting time. And I've talked about in the past how you as eye care providers are in a great position to help influence the future. Um, by prescribing lenses to your patients. Of course, uh, there, there is a potential for an alternate future. Uh, as Patrick's talked about, new competitors are rapidly um, coming into the marketplace, and in contact lenses, this is no different. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware of Hubble, um, but I think the biggest concern isn't Hubble, it's who's going to be the next players coming into this marketplace. And so all of these different contact lens products are coming to the United States, um, and they're already out there in other countries. And so they do represent a potential threat to your contact lens practice. So we're gonna open up our uh, another polling question um, to just get your guys' view on what do these contact lenses have in common? Uh, so some of the choices are they're marketed direct to consumer, they're based on hydrogel technology, um, they're a potential threat to your practice, uh, or all of the above. So I'd like you to weigh in on, on your thoughts. Some of you might be familiar with some of these materials. Some of them might be new to you and uh, less familiar. But let's go ahead and get some a few more votes in. And we'll go ahead and close out the poll in five, four, Three, two, one. All right. Let's go ahead and close that out and share the results. So um, most of you uh, got the right answer. So 90% of you said all of the above. Uh, and that's true. So these are all directly marketed to consumers. Um, not all of them have made their way to the United States yet, but most of them have indicated that they're launching in the United States imminently. Um, they are based on older hydrogel technology. Uh, part of the reason for that is that a lot of these materials are based on older contact lens materials that were originally owned by some of the major contact lens companies, but have gone off patent. So the patent rights have expired, and now anyone can go out and find someone to contract manufacture those lenses for them. Um, we do believe they are a potential threat to your practice. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how prescribing the latest technology can help you defend against that threat. And when Patrick comes back on, he'll talk a little bit more about how 
making the contact lens buying journey more convenient for your patients can also help um, mitigate that threat to your practice. All right. So let's keep rolling on. So that's what the future could look like, but we're not going to let that happen. Um, because as we said, as ECPs, 94% of the contact lens wearers surveyed will follow your suggestions and um, your prescription recommendations. So you have the ability to drive the future by offering one day silicone kind of gel lenses for your patients. And um, some of the advantages are excellent comfort. Uh, so there used to be a time when um, silicone hydrogels were thought to be less comfortable than hydrogel lenses. Uh, that's no longer the case. Now, silicone hydrogel one-day lenses are some of the most comfortable products on the market. Uh, and in fact, some third-party uh, literature studies have shown that they're either equally as comfortable or in some cases even more comfortable than the leading hydrogel products. Um, so you're not giving up anything on comfort. Of course, we've talked at length about the ocular health benefits. And if you'd like to read more on that, there's a nice uh, review article in 2013 um, looking retrospectively at silicone hydrogel lenses and the impact they've had on wearer health. And um, a quote from one of the articles in there is the superior health benefits of silicone hydrogel materials um, have been found for all modalities. So there used to be a thought that um, maybe you only needed silicone hydrogel uh, for reusable lens wearers or for overnight wear. Uh, that's really been dispelled by quite a few studies that have been done and shown significant benefits of the silicone hydrogel material, even for one day wearers. And then finally, you can keep it simple for your patients. So if you're looking to upgrade a reusable contact lens wearer, they're most likely already in a silicone hydrogel material. Um, so does it really make sense to upgrade them in terms of convenience by putting them in a one-day modality, but take them backwards in terms of material um, and, and make them adjust to perhaps different handling characteristics and a different feeling on the eye. Uh, why not just keep them in the best material and then upgrade them to the most convenient modality and help them take two st giant steps forward? Um, so those are some ways we talked about innovation, being able to delight your patients. Um, here's some ways that offering the latest technology and contact lenses can help defend your practice. Uh, so in a recent survey, 90% of patients actually said that they'd be more loyal to their doctor for upgrading them into a more breathable lens. In a 2013 study by Kathy Dumbleton, she showed that um, silicone hydrogel was potentially an effective way to help defend against contact lens dropout. Uh, so what she found is that there were actually more current wearers in silicone hydrogel material than lapsed wearers, really suggesting that silicone hydrogel wearers may be able to wear contact lenses for longer and stay in contact lens wear. And then finally, what you're able to offer is something truly different than these direct-to-consumer companies. You're able to offer a silicone hydrogel material and uh, our, our sales reps can provide you with one of these chair side aids where you can visually show your patients that you're offering them something different. Uh, so these are something called oxygen maps. And to put it really simple, they're kind of a color coded heat map. And so where you see green and blue and purple, more oxygen is getting through the contact lens. And when you see yellows and oranges, uh, you're getting oxygen transmission that's a little bit suboptimal. And the value that uh, is indicating this color change between yellow and green is 24.1. And this was established long ago by Brian Holden as sort of the minimum oxygen transmission um, needed to avoid symptoms of corneal hypoxia. So you can show your patients really simply, look, I know you've, you've heard about Hubble on Instagram and in other places, um, but I'm recommending something different. So you could see in this picture, there's a lot of orange and, and, and yellow. And those are areas under the lens where your eye isn't getting all the oxygen it needs. I'm going to put you in a silicone hydrogel lens where you're going to get more than enough oxygen in order to fulfill the needs of your eye. And so it's a very simple and visual way to explain to patients how you're offering them something different and something better. So 
Um, that's one perspective. Now, what do your peers say about silicone hydrogel? Um, so we've got some great insights from three of your peers. Uh, first, Dr. Carol dietz Burtka, who talks about silicone hydrogel being a win-win proposition. Um, so what she said is the profitability in her practice has definitely increased since she started utilizing silicon hydrogel one days. Um, and she says also the product's much better. So her patients feel like they're getting excellent value in that upgrade. So she really sees it as an opportunity for the patient to win as well as the practice. Um, Dr. Jeff Swafford, who's a practicing optometrist in the Chicago area, you know, asked why would you offer anything less? Um, and he says he firmly believes that every patient is a good candidate for a silicone gel daily disposable lens. And so since it's the best technology on the market, um, why would he offer his patients anything less? Uh, and finally, Dr. Jack McIntyre, who practices in South Texas, says that silicone hydrogel one-day lenses give him the opportunity to stay relevant in a changing world. Uh, so he says that all technology continues to evolve, which Patrick's content has definitely shown, and uh, eye care providers must keep pace with this changing technology by offering the latest innovations in contact lenses. And when we look out at the market, we can see clearly that uh, this is where the market's going. So in the last five years, the percentage of uh, new fits that are going into one days has nearly doubled. And this now represents over a third of the market. And if we look within that at silicone hydrogel one day, uh, what we can see is that, and I apologize, I know this is a very busy slide. What we can see is that increasingly ECPs and patients are upgrading to one-day silicone hydrogel. So all the orange arrows you see are instances where a patient is moving from either a reusable silicone hydrogel or a hydrogel material into one-day PSI-I. And that represents over 50% of the patient switches. And then almost another 30% are people finally upgrading out of reusable hydrogels into a reusable silicone hydrogel. Um, so, in reality, there's becoming less of a need to move patients from a reusable silicone hydrogel into a one-day hydrogel. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how Cooper Vision's unmatched one-day sci-high portfolio can help you um, catch this trend and be part of this trend of the upgrade to one-day silicone hydrogel. Uh, so one opportunity is taking your current monthly or bi-weekly silicone hydrogel wearers and upgrading them into a one-day silicone hydrogel. And this is almost a quarter of the contact lens switches that are going on in the market. And our Clarity One Day portfolio is uniquely suited to that. So some of the advantages of Clarity One Day are that you're offering up to three times as much oxygen transmission as some of the one-day hydrogel lenses that you might consider transitioning that patient into. Uh, it's a naturally wettable silicone hydrogel product with UV protection, and you have the full family of sphere toric and multifocal. But even more significant is that one of the biggest pushbacks we've heard from ECPs um, on transitioning a patient from a reusable to a one-day lens is the cost associated with that. And the great thing about the Clarity One Day portfolio is that you can upgrade your patients into a silicone hydrogel one day for about the same cost, excuse me, about the same cost as you would a one-day hydrogel lens. And so this is a, a really great opportunity where you're taking them into the most advanced technology available on the market, and you're not costing them anything extra. And in fact, in some cases, the Clarity One Day can actually be slightly cheaper than some of the one-day hydrogel options. Uh, so this is a really nice opportunity to get the patients into the one-day modality, uh, but minimize that sticker shock. And then what about all those patients that are already in a one-day hydrogel product? Um, we're seeing about 23% of those start to upgrade into the one-day silicone hydrogel. And, and there, the product portfolio we've seen that works the best is our MyDay family of lenses. Um, so I'm very partial to MyDay. I, I, me and my team worked a lot on uh, developing this contact lens material. And we really created it to be everything a contact lens should be. So 
we have the excellent high oxygen transmissibility of a silicone hydrogel lens, more than enough for one day wear, um, naturally wettable material. Um, but most importantly, it's an extremely soft contact lens material with a modulus of about 0.4 megapascals. And when we set out to develop my day, really the only other successful one day lens on the market was AccuView Moist. And so what we wanted to do was to bring everything that patients loved about that lens, the softness, the natural wettability, but layer in these additional benefits of silicone hydrogel, such as excellent handling and much better oxygen transmission to avoid complications of hypoxia. Um, and on top of that, we also added UV protection to the lens. So it really is the total package for contact lens wearers. And uh, last but certainly not least is our MyDay Toric, uh, which is probably our most anticipated product launch in the history of Cooper Vision. Uh, so the only complaint I ever heard about Biofinity Toric is when are you guys going to offer this design in a one-day lens so I can upgrade my current Biofinity Toric patients? And now it's here. So we've been able to utilize the optimized Toric lens geometry from Biofinity Toric and put it on our one-day platform in my day. And so as you'd expect from your experience with Biofinity Toric, the lens gives cons consistent exceptional vision quality throughout the day. Um, and also practitioners have found that it has excellent rotational recovery as you'd expect and good lens fit. Uh, so this really is, you'll see these gold rings um, and I like bad puns quite a bit. This is really a perfect marriage between our best silicone hydrogel material that we've ever made in terms of the my day and our best market leading toric design um, in terms of the optimized toric lens geometry. And so to close, we talked about uh, the future and we talked about how you as eye care providers really have um, an ability to shape the future of contact lenses. What's that gonna look like? And probably the single biggest thing you can do is to be the first to tell your patients about one day lenses and not let it be some of these guys below. Um, because these guys below have a heavy internet presence. I know I see them on my Instagram feed all the time, and they're more than happy to tell your patients about upgrading to one-day lenses. And so uh, that concludes my part of the webinar. Um, I hope I've, I've shared with you some key insights on how you can use the latest technology in contact lenses not only to create happy patients, but also to help defend your practice. And how Cooper Vision's unmatched one-day silicone eye gel portfolio uh, is uniquely positioned to help you do that. Now I'm going to turn it back to Patrick, because Patrick's going to tell you about a simple digital solution called LensFairy. And early on, we talked about the key things consumers look for, right? Quality, price, convenience. And what LensFairy can help you do is it can help make your practice the most convenient way for your patients to buy their contact lenses. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Patrick. All right, thank you, Steve. All right, so thank you everyone. And thank you, Steve, for um, going through. So you have, you have, you're equipped with this quality, innovative product. And Steve did a good job of going through what that is and what it looks like and how your patients can benefit from that. But now I'd like to go through a few solutions of how can you make sure that your patients are ordering that from you. So bear with us a few more minutes. I know we're going to be at the top of the hour, but I'll go through this quickly. First, you know, I just want to touch really quick on, you know, successful businesses are digital at their core. And to me, it's fascinating. To see as practices who adopt mobile tech, mobile commerce technology into their business model, and they're finding there are several segments of their patients who prefer these capabilities once the practice makes it available. So let online competitors continue spending millions of millions and millions building a digital platform for e-commerce only. You can simply enhance your EHR patient management system that you've already invested heavily in to make it even more convenient for your patient to buy from you outside the office from any of their devices. 
And that's where LensFerry comes in. LensFerry is a mobile commerce solution that gives your patients the convenience they really have come to expect. Being able to order their lenses from, from you, their trusted eye care doctor, and anytime, from any device, wherever they are. And there's so many ways that you can use this technology. It makes it very convenient for patients to order with one click, one text, whether they're within their, their phone browser, within text message, email, so online, and through direct, direct communication as well. And it's much more convenient rather than having to go online like 1-800 forces them to actually know all that data and go through a very significant buying process, requiring them to have their prescription or at least have it memorized if they don't have it on them. So LensFerry is a very convenient tool that complements the infrastructure that you already have, extending your current operations and enhancing your EHR for these capabilities. It works with uh, your distributor of choice. It's built off all of your box pricing and you're getting paid the full amount the patient pays. <clears throat> and, and it integrates seamlessly with your EHR, and we work with a majority of the a majority of EHR systems. What LensFerry allows you to do is it, it really captures, it allows you to kind of, allows you to reach 100% of your contact lens patients. You know, other online competitors are a little bit more limited in their capabilities where 1-800 or simple contacts, they're e-commerce only. That's one channel that they're focused on. Or Hubble and um, Sightbox are subscription models. So that subscription model is their sole channel. What LensFerry does, it arms you with those same capabilities to provide so much more in a very convenient way. So where you're inputting and creating orders within your management system, LensFerry is packaging that in a way for patients that who purchase less than an annual supply are able to simply simply order with one, one text or one click rather than having to go through the entire process. And they have options. So they can receive reorder reminders, they can subscribe if they want to. If they're online and engaging within your website, they can also order contacts as well. If you're doing e-marketing campaigns or any sort of local marketing, you can utilize your online portal link for patients to easily order. Or if they're going within your review pages, which hopefully they are reviewing you in a good way, they should be able to order their contacts from you in a convenient way as well if they didn't purchase the annual supply already. So really extending what you already have and making it available outside of the office. LensFerry really is that workhorse that is complementing your, your, your contact lens technicians and all the efforts they're doing up front in selling the annual supply. Beyond the capabilities that LensFerry offers your practice, tech-wise, there's also a lot of support that we dedicate as well, marketing and both uh, customer support. So there's a whole library. We have a huge on-demand library of marketing resources available to you. There's a lot of resources you'll get initially. If you want to do any sort of uh, specific e-marketing campaign on a specific channel, we have templates available to you for like Facebook posts or anything of that nature. Uh, very convenient for you to use and at your own convenience. I'd like to touch on that. Everything is branded for the practice. The goal of lens fairy is that the patient is receiving their lenses and they're buying from you, their doctor. So everything is branded for your business. Rebates are also a question we get often and we've kind of mimicked that within lens fairy of our own. So upon their first order, they'll receive a $25 Visa gift card and that's, that's regardless of manufacturer. Lastly, LensFerry really is as simple as it sounds, and there's an even more simple onboarding process to it. So it's a two-step process. We do a quick kickoff call, and there's a short training process. But most of LensFerry is working behind the scenes and how it's, in, how it's integrating with your management system. So there's a very minimal setup time. It, it's very successful from the start. So when you decide to launch LensFerry, LensFerry is already messaging those patients within the last year that are set that ordered less than an annual supply and are looking to reorder. So there's a lot of practices that are capturing success from the, from the get-go. And it really is increasing your practice revenue and streamlining your office efficiencies. Staff don't have to place orders manually and have to go through that process and field calls. LensFerry is doing that automatically and just a quick, quick step of approving and denying orders. So very easy onboarding process, lots of support behind the tech, beyond the tech capabilities and the tech capabilities extend everything you're already doing. So a very simple solution. Beyond that, 
we take a lot of pride in working with optometry getting sight. And for every, and for every order, or that every lens free order that a patient makes, we donate the medical exam to someone in need. So a great way for patients to feel like they're giving back by ordering from their eye care doctor and something we take and we're very proud of participating in as well. Lastly, you know, LensFerry is a part of our suite of value-add software solutions that we've made available to support eye care practices. Founded by an optometrist over 14 years ago, today I can officially state that eye care Prime is a leading global provider of software solutions to the eye care industry. And our products are built to help with every step of the patient journey, maximizing your appointment schedule to fill chair time, capture contact lens revenue, and acquire new patients by optimizing your online presence and digital market efforts. I highly encourage you to, to uh, take a look to look into LensFerry. That's a very key component and, a, and really an instant success tool. But we also have other capabilities with patient relationship management and building out your online presence with digital marketing, social media, and SEO that I also encourage you to look into as well. Okay, well, I'll end it there. You know, I hope you enjoyed the information we've shared in today's, today's webinar. If anything, we hope it motivates you to consider you know, what changes must be made. Spark some ideas on you know, what will you do different tomorrow? And what will your strategy be going forward in this changing digital economy? There's a lot of brain power available to you at Cooper Vision and iCare Prime to support your practice. So please let us know how we can assist you. If you have any questions on the topics we covered today, please email us at iCarePrime at coopervision.com. Thank you for your time, and please let us know if, there's any, if you have any questions. All right, well, if you have any questions, please contact us, but I'll close out the webinar, and thank you again for attending.